Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news coming from Northeast Detroit where three police officers were shot and a suspect remains barricaded right now. Also breaking at this hour, the patriarch of the Van Elslander family passed away this morning. Good afternoon. Art Van Elslander's rich and productive life tops our news at this hour. He is, of course, the founder of Art Van Furniture and the man credited with saving America's Thanksgiving parade. He's also known for his charity work all across the country. Rhonda Walker takes a look at his life. It is certainly with heavy hearts, Karen, that we share that the patriarch of the Art Van Elslander family has passed away, certainly known widely for his hugely successful Art Van Furniture empire and for saving America's Thanksgiving parade so many years ago and still to this day being so supportive and generous. While he's known across the nation for his business success, his true passion was family and helping others. Art Van Elslander stepped up to save the loving tradition of America's Thanksgiving parade nearly 30 years ago. You wrote a check and you saved this parade for Detroit and for all of Southeast Michigan. Does it seem like that long ago? It does, Ben. It really does. And each time I come here, I'm reminded of, of what a great, great thing that it was. I didn't realize it at the time, but each year and each year riding the parade, seeing the kids at curbside, I'm thankful that I did do it. And his support has been unwavering, creating lifelong memories for thousands of children, lining Woodward Avenue, and millions more watching on television. The kids love it, they all do. My children love it, the grandchildren love it, and they're all part of it. I'm so happy we were able to save the parade back then. I think it's part of the city, part of the fabric of the city, and I just think it's one of the most wonderful things that we have for families to celebrate. America's Thanksgiving Parade is just one way Art Van was committed to this community, whether it's the Art Van Charity Challenge, donating to nearly 400 charities and helping to raise $24 million in donations, or helping to collect 3 million bottles of water for Flint, hosting food drives for the needy, blood drives for the American Red Cross, or donating hundreds of mattresses. Giving back was a priority for Art Van Elslander. And his philanthropy includes a huge donor, in fact, the largest donor for the St. John Providence Health System with a neuroscience, also surgical and cancer center to his name. In addition to that, he began his career all the way back in 1959, some 60 years ago with that first Art Van Furniture store on Gratiot and 10 Mile. Since then, that store has grown to 100 brick and mortar stores across several states. He employs nearly 4,000 people. While he recently sold the Art Van Furniture Company, there is no question his legacy and his lasting impact on this community will continue for many years to come. Art Van Elslander was 87 years old, and he touched just about everyone in this community. Karen, back to you. He sure did. Thank you, Rhonda. And we have learned Van Elslander had been battling cancer for the past year. We'll have more on his passing and his legacy throughout the day here on Local 4, as well as click on Detroit.com. Very busy Monday afternoon, also breaking right now, chaos on Detroit's east side. Now, this began last night. We now know two women are dead, three police officers were shot, and at one point, two suspects were barricaded. One was taken into custody this morning, but the other remains barricaded right now. Let's get out to Rod Maloney. He is piecing this fluid situation together. Rod, can you take us back to exactly how this all started? Yes, we believe it was an argument between a man and his girlfriend, uh, but it is such a complicated story. We'll, we'll do our best to try and make it so that it makes sense here. But here's the situation. The second gunman that you talked about, uh, Karen, coming in uh, is not involved in this. They thought he had been firing his weapon. He had not. So what we have here is a man, his name is Lance Smith, identified by Detroit police. They claim that they think he is mentally ill and that he is at the heart of what amounted to a shooting gallery out here at Lamont and uh, East Outer Drive on the east side today. Uh, it started last night about 1030. This uh, fight escalated um, and one woman went to the house and was allegedly shot. Then a second woman who apparently was either a sister or some kind of a relative went. She was shot. The belief is that a third woman is also shot. Now, sadly, 
All three, we believe, of those women are dead. The, the two that went to the home, we know for certain are dead. Detroit police think the third woman, who would be the girlfriend, is likely dead inside the house. In the meantime, three Detroit police officers have also been shot and shot at and hit. A first one was actually a Detroit Public Schools Community District officer who was off duty and apparently related to one of the women who had been shot. He was shot in the leg. Then there was another officer shot, and yet the third officer. Two of the officers have been treated and released from the hospital. The third is going to be released sometime uh, in the next 24 hours. We're told all of them were shot in the leg. In the meantime, this Lance Smith apparently had a rifle. He has access to guns. About seven of them, we're told, has a CPL license. But he was shooting at police officers indiscriminately um, and pinning them down for the better part of an hour. Let's hear from Chief Craig now, Chief James Craig, talking about what his officers have endured since last night. It was just at the time we deployed our third volley of gas. Uh, he didn't respond. The suspect was heard saying, prior to and during this instance, I will not be taken without a fight. So he clearly expressed an intention to do harm. He clearly expressed an intention uh, to hurt police officers. And evidence of it was the number of police officers that were fired on and the fact that they were pinned down by gunfire for at least one hour. And so as it stands right now, the uh, Michigan State Police have assumed a control over the perimeter around this house and they have been sending robots into the house trying to establish whether Lance Smith is alive, whether he's still inside or whether there's something that needs to go on in terms of some sort of assault on the house with the SWAT team. There have been uh, dozens upon dozens of police officers here and they have been uh, uh, relieving one shift as the next one goes. We're still waiting to hear about the final resolution of this. Certainly we'll be here all day. We'll have an update on Local 4 News at 4, 5, and 6. Reporting live from Detroit's east side, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, thank you, Rod. We'll be checking back with you later. We are also following a developing story in Highland Park where a seven-month-old baby died after being taken to the hospital. Police say there were no signs of foul play, but at this time, they are investigating the death as a homicide. Parents are being questioned. No one is in custody. Police are awaiting the results of an autopsy. Brandon. Well, Karen, we may be seeing the warmest temperatures of the day right now, and it's not saying a whole lot. 25 degrees. Look uh, upstream here. Ludington, 20. It's 19 in Traverse City. A little cool front working its way through Metro Detroit as we speak, and wind chills are primarily in the teens. You can see it hasn't quite slipped through Grosseal yet or southern Ontario, but again, slight tumble in the temperatures as we go forward here down into the lower 20s through the afternoon. But that vitamin D from the sun certainly does help. Coming up, we'll talk about how long the cool down lasts. And we do have a very nice warm up. All right. Thank you very much, Brandon. MDOT will be out over the next few days to fix the worst of the pavement and they say to be ready for delays. Today, southbound US 24 from Orchard Lake to Square Lake has just one lane open from 930 this morning until 7 o'clock tonight. Tomorrow, from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m., two sections of eastbound I-696 from DeQuinder to Ryan and the other from US 24 to Losser. And southbound I-75 from Coolidge to Square Lake will have up to two lanes close. Prepare yourself. Also tomorrow from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m. U.S. 24 will have only the right lane open from Orchard Lake to Square Lake. Today, the White House rolled out President Trump's long-awaited infrastructure plan. The $1.5 trillion plan is expected to repair and rebuild the nation's crumbling highways, bridges, railroads, airports, and water systems. Now, this is a departure from past plans where the federal government covered a bulk of the cost. The Trump plan would see local governments taking on 80% or more of the funding burden. Critics of the plan say it will lead to higher state and local taxes and an increase in toll, water, and sewer fees. Meantime, the Trump administration's proposed budget could lead to the privatization of the orbiting International Space Station. The Washington Post reports the new budget calls for spending $150 million in the new fiscal year to support the space station. But the plan is 
to stop funding the project in 2024 and the transition the space station to the private sector. The proposal is already drawing criticism from scientists and politicians, including some Republicans. Well, this week has started out on a much better footing on the stock market following a really volatile week that sent the market down to a correction. The New York Stock Exchange opened trading this morning with the Dow Jones Industrials average starting up more than 300 points. Stocks and banks and tech companies were especially strong. Markets in Europe all rose today while markets in Asia were mixed. Here is a look at the major market indexes at this moment and you take a look at your screen. The Dow, Nasdaq and S&P 500 all up. Still to come, the maker of OxyContin is taking action to stop the abuse of opioids, what they're pledging to do. Plus, the trouble is not over for Harvey Weinstein or the Weinstein Company, what the New York Attorney General is pledging to do. And we are continuing following breaking news on Detroit's east side. That is where one suspect is in custody. The other remains barricaded in the police standoff that began last night. Three police officers injured, one off duty, his wife was one of the victims killed. Two adult sisters were killed. A female relative of the off-duty officer remains missing. Multiple police agencies are working at this scene, which is East Outer Drive and Ryan Road. We are following this breaking news. We'll have more after the break. Get we are following a developing story out of New York where that state's attorney general is suing to block the sale of the movie making Weinstein Company. New York's attorney general wants to stop the sale with a civil rights lawsuit alleging that employees were mistreated and exploited. Co-founder Harvey Weinstein was dropped from the company last year after allegations of repeated acts of sexual misconduct. The legal action blocking the sale could push the company into bankruptcy. An Olympic swimmer says she was abused by a former Team USA coach. Ariana Kukors told police her former coach, Sean Hutchinson, sexually abused her and took thousands of nude photos of her when she was a minor. Kukors also alleges she was groomed and manipulated from the age of 13, and the abuse continued for over a decade. The former coach stepped down as CEO of King Aquatic Club in the Pacific Northwest right after Kukors went public. New developments this noon in America's fight against the opioid epidemic. Purdue Pharma says it will stop promoting the drug OxyContin to physicians. It is also cutting its sales force in half. Purdue and other pharmaceutical companies have been sued by some states over its promotion of opioid drugs. Purdue denies any wrongdoing and says its products account for only 2% of the opioids prescribed in the U.S. Still to come. While we suffered through snow, heavy rainfall caused severe flooding in other parts of the country, where this chaos unfolded. Brandon. All right, Karen, we're looking at a very cold Great Lakes region here. Nobody is getting to or above freezing anytime soon. But those of you with warm hearts, a warm stretch is coming. I've got it next. Can't stop checking your phone even at home? I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Tonight at 5, I'll show you the hidden impact it could be having on your kids now and in the future. This winter. We continue to follow breaking news on Detroit's east side. That is where one suspect is in custody. The other remains barricaded in a police standoff that began last night. Three police officers were shot and injured. One was off duty. His wife was one of the victims killed. Two adult sisters were also killed. A female relative of the off-duty officer remains missing. Police from multiple agencies are working on the scene right now at East Outer Drive and Ryan Road. Several counties in Southwest Virginia are recovering after some really heavy rainfall caused severe flooding. The fire department had to conduct several rescue missions on Saturday night. Same system that brought us all the snow here. Heavy rain down south. More than 30 roads throughout the area were shut down and roads that remained open were slick with uh, water covering them. Five shelters open for people forced to evacuate their homes and officials say no injuries have been reported yet. Yeah, man, sometimes we're lucky when it's snow because it sort of goes away a little bit uh, better than that rain can and just makes a little bit less of a mess, if that makes any sense. This is our local four storm pins, a free app and M 
Hunt Wagner in Gross Point Farms says, my sister and her husband are snowed in and their flight was canceled. Oh, where's my video? Here it is, ready? Wait for it, wait for it. Oh, is it not gonna work? Oh, it's an awesome video, here we go, here we go. Wait for it, there they are. Couple of wacky kids <laughs> over there in Gross Point. It was worth the wait. It was worth it. Come on. Their flight got, they were going somewhere tropical and they said, you know what? We're doing it here. 25 degrees right now. They're probably not out in this right now. Northwest winds eight and the wind chill is 16. These are probably the warmest numbers that we are going to see throughout the day. You can see it's middle 20s just about everywhere with middle teens for wind chills. So we'll keep it right where we are and take down the numbers a little bit as we head through the middle and late afternoon, lower 20s, and then quickly into the teens this evening. If you have any plans to be out and about a hockey game here or something with the kids, it's going to be chilly with probably 15, 16 degrees by 7, 8 o'clock overnight down to 10 degrees. And we need to watch out for more of that refreeze the sun is out today and that allows even sub freezing temperatures will allow for some melting and we'll get that refreezing very slippery sidewalks and side streets even some of the highways tomorrow morning will be a little icy but not a whole lot happening here from the skies today there's that cold front pushing through as we speak. So it's just a matter of time before we start feeling it. In fact, some of our uh, parts of our west zone are already getting into the cooler air in Livingston and Washtenaw counties. Computer model doesn't show a whole lot here today. Here's Tuesday where we do have a little bit of cloud cover and temperatures sub freezing once again. On Wednesday, Valentine's Day, we get warmer winds coming up and a little bit of drizzle coming in late, late Wednesday, but we should get into some sun before that on Wednesday, Valentine's Day into the 40s nicely. Some spotty showers Thursday, Karen, but another 40 plus degree day and we could hit it again on Sunday. Always nice to hear about a warm up. We like that. Thank you, Brandon. And we'll be right back. We are following breaking news on Detroit's east side. That is where one suspect is in custody. The other remains barricaded in the police standoff that began last night. You are looking at the situation live as it is developing. Three police officers were wounded. One was off duty. His wife was one of the victims killed. Two adult sisters were killed. A female relative of the off-duty officer remains missing. Police from multiple agencies are working on the scene at East Outer Drive and Ryan Road. Our crew remains there and, of course, we will keep you updated. The third highest ranking official at the Justice Department steps down, according to multiple sources. Associate Attorney General Rachel Brand feared she would be asked to oversee the Russia investigation. She also became frustrated by vacancies within the department. Of course, we'll be following this breaking story throughout the afternoon. And we'll switch gears a little bit. It was home sweet home, or in this case, salty home, I guess. Is that a phrase? Yes. For one sea turtle in the Florida Keys. Booga, the sea turtle, was released at Marathon's Sombrero Beach on Saturday as hundreds of residents and visitors watched. It's a pretty cool scene. The 125-pound sub-adult loggerhead sea turtle was rescued in September after being found tangled in a fishing trap line. She was then taken to the turtle hospital, and she had her right rear flipper amputated and some other surgeries and treatments, but she is doing well and returning back to the beach. Who knew there was a turtle hospital? I would have I know. had that issue with my shell.